Hey, what's going on, folks? My name is Grey. You're watching Video Holocaust, where today I once more return to the vaults of vintage anime to bring you a review of an 80s classic that not only played its part in introducing Japanese animation to the West in the early 90s, but continues to inspire many within the industry to this very day. It is the 1986 sci-fi action comedy hit, Project Aiko. Too many out there raised on recent hit shows such as Naruto, Bleach or Attack on Titan, the thought of watching older, hand-drawn anime from the past can be quite off-putting. But while the 1980s produced a real mixed bag when it comes to quality, it was an exciting time with enthusiastic young animators looking to make a mark in an industry that had only been in existence in Japan since the 1960s. In fact, it was Asama Tezuka, known in Japan as the God of Manga, who created and popularised the distinct manga style way back in 1948, which is still the de facto look in use today, who would also be the first to produce anime in Japan based on his own manga works, such as Astro Boy and The Jungle Emperor. That last one is the one in which Disney shamelessly ripped off wholesale in what would become one of their most revered movies, The Lion King. Before we get down to the nitty gritty and look at this movie in a little bit more detail, some of you may be wondering what an Aiko is when it's at home. Well, Aiko is in fact the name of our fit red-headed leading lady, who is joined by Biko and Seiko, which in English translates to Girl A, Girl B and Girl C. In fact, the title Project Aiko comes from a movie that was popular in Japan during its production, and that's Jackie Chan's Project A. But while Project Aiko started out as the working title and stuck, virtually everything else was changed at some point or another during production. Originally conceived as an instalment in the softcore hentai series Cream Lemon, it would evolve very quickly into a full-blown theatrical release that very clearly had one eye on the growing home video market, as this is a film packed to the gills with references and homages from other popular works like Captain Horlock, Fist of the North Star, Gundam and Macross, and probably a dozen more I didn't pick up on. Even Aiko's parents are supposed to be Wonder Woman and Superman, a gag I missed on my first viewing. And perhaps because of its visual gags, many hidden, encouraging repeated viewings, Project Aiko was a big hit, particularly on VHS and Laserdisc, so inevitably a slew of sequels followed, and while all are great in their own way, for me the original is still my favourite. They created something special in an era and environment that will never be recreated. To say the lunatics were running the asylum during production of this movie might sound harsh, but it's not far from the truth. Director and panty shot master Katsuhiko Nishijima, as well as character designer Yuji Morigama, were given complete creative control to such an extent that they didn't even have a script, and storyboarded the film, making changes on the fly, often last minute, whenever a new idea was thought up that the team liked. Previous to this, most of the the principal crew behind the scenes had spent years working on Urasei Yatsura, aka LUM, the animated TV series based on Rumiko Takahashi's first breakout manga hit. Project Aiko would become the vehicle to showcase not only the obvious talents of all those involved, but also to relieve a lot of the frustrations they felt being tied down to simply adapting comics for TV and magical girl shows in general, which were becoming increasingly popular at this time. This movie was all the things they liked and wanted to animate, like big action set pieces, oddball characters, mecha and mindless anarchy. As Yuji Morigama said in the DVD audio commentary, I basically did whatever I wanted. 
But is this movie nothing more than an 80 plus minute daikon opening or is there some semblance of a story? Well the film follows friends super strong Eiko and adorable Seiko as they transfer to a new high school where they encounter snobby rich kid Biko who takes a fancy to Seiko and decides the best way to show this is to get rid of Eiko by any means necessary which usually involve giant stompy robots. However when these all fail she decides to do it the old-fashioned way and dons a rather fetching exosuit to fight Aiko to the death. And that's when the space aliens arrive and kidnap Seiko. Aiko and Biko decide to put down their hostilities and rescue Seiko in a plot as nutty as it sounds, but damn it, it works. So there we have it folks, my review of the screwball but essential viewing all action comedic movie that gave opportunities to any unknown they could find in order to get it finished. Most of whom would go on to carve out names for themselves in the world of manga and anime but still proudly list Project Aiko as one of their most cherished experiences. For all its chaos behind the scenes, it truly was a labour of love. So my name is Grey. Thank you for watching my Project Aiko review, more videos up soon, so please share, like, comment and subscribe. I'm off to re-watch this and you should too. So again, thank you for watching and goodbye.